Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to drive cart. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve to lay down. Training Eve to harness, pull a log. Training Semi to harness, pull a log on turf. Jumping at liberty to music, making our Morgan horses our partners. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Training on our driveway, which is covered by sand, so we have a straight track. Stepping over poles, jumping over crossbar jumps. Training in our trail obstacles area. Semi on the big steps. Morgan Horse Sadie doing obstacles rainlessly. Sadie learns to pull a cart. Miniature Zebu Heifer Susie learns to drive a cart. Bull Rusty learns to pull a harrow. Continuation, part two of the birth of Mini Zebu Heifer Sela. Yeah, the calf has um, been cleaned up by the mother. It has pooped, um, but it's shaking, and I want to know if I can pick it up without distressing the mother too much and take it a very close, about six feet away to a, a much warmer place. The sun is... Okay. All right, and, and it's been about 50 minutes, and the afterbirth is still hanging out. Should I pull it or leave it? Oh boy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, now the, the calf has not gone to the nipples yet. Can I expect nature to somehow get that calf to the nipples? Okay. Okay, yeah, I've seen two of those. Okay. Well, I don't think you should move because the sun is coming out. Uh-huh. Yes, I understand. Yes. Okay. Right. It looked for a little bit like she was hiccuping, and that bothered me, but I think she stopped hip hiccuping, and that right after the hiccuping, it kind of stopped after she um, defecated. <laughs> so, Okay. Oh, yeah, the calf's been up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're there till 3 o'clock, right? Okay, thank you. Bye. The calf stood up? Oh, yeah, it's been up. She said, let, the, let, let it keep coming out for one to four hours. She said, yes, as long as we uh, keep the calf inside of the mother, we can move it to a warmer place. It was hiccuping, you know, like, <gasps> and I was very worried. But then the poop came out, and Susie ate the poop. Huh. Weird. 
The shaking, according to Christine at the vet's office, is normal. The fact that she stood up and that Susie's licking her is good. But the calf has not gone to the nipples, and Susie said nature should take its course. Excuse me, uh, Christine at the vet's office said nature should take its course. Uh, and then, Stan, I want to ask you, you see where Susie's licking right now under the tail? I see this little red slip. Do you think that's a vulva? Oh, Susie's thirsty. We're going to get a bucket. There's a bucket right up there, Stan. And, and put it on the floor for Susie because she's having trouble reaching over the lip of this pneumatic white water tub. Now the calf just stood up. Stan's going to go out and get some water from the other water tub right outside. I have 48 water tubs here at Minmore Farms because I know how important water is. Not, not too much noise, Stan. I don't want to stress anybody here, any bovine here. So he's doing it from the hose and I just didn't want there to be a loud hose noise. And then Jill came by with her dog, and I said, maybe you better pick her up. How would Susie perceive the barking of a small dog? I don't know. So let's just be careful here, not to cause any stress. You have to face it that this kind of thing usually happens out in the pasture without the intervention of bipeds, canines, hoses, etc. The calf is starting to look a little fluffy, like it's drying, and thank goodness it's getting sunny. And if it continues to get sunny, which usually happens very quickly once the clouds and the overcast dissipates, it's 20 to 1. I think I'll just let them stay right where they are. I'm not going to intervene at all because that sun will be cozy. Okay, now Stan, when you approach, do it very, very slowly, please. I don't want Susie to think you are attacking anything, but I'll bet you she'll drink water. Yes. Definitely. Okay, you see this other water tub isn't that high, but she didn't step close enough to it to reach over it. Probably because the calf was between her and the water tub and there's probably some reason she felt it wasn't safe to step closer. Now she's drinking a lot. See there are flies even now the sun coming out, there'll be a lot more flies. So I really feel that the right decision is to leave that fly mask on. It's, I think, not interfering with anything that Susie has to do in nature to care for this calf. Any opinion yet, Stan, as to whether it's a heifer or a bull? No. He says no. No opinion yet. Dan, when you were up at the house, did you happen to notice that that camera was looking in this direction? Because I didn't have... You, you couldn't see in that camera. You can't see this corner. I turned that camera into this corner. I don't think it can see past the equishade into that corner, but that one can. not What did it see? I don't know. It didn't see enough. This one... Okay, so Stan's going to take over on the camera work.
here while I try to adjust the cameras on the wall so that when I do go to the house, at some point, I'm going to be able to see Susie and her calf no matter where she is in this cow pen. And you see that plastic bag there, Stan? That is for the afterbirth when it finally falls out. We need to make sure we save it and it's available for inspection if needed. Oh, look at the flies are already on the little calf's head. How am I going to make a fly mask small enough for that? Now I have to start being creative again. Can you take over on the camera, Stan? Thank you. Observe things. Can you say something in the camera? Yeah. Uh, Susie needs more water. How about filling her bucket again? I'll do that later because there's enough water in there. I really want to go see if I can get the cameras. Yeah, the flies are pestering her.
That camera is real good because of the sun. This one just has to be picked up higher, and I think we're going to be able to watch from the house. Number two on it, and today's date, 8109. Uh, why don't you um, take a chair? Well, there's an outlet right there. Plug in that camera so it can be recharging that battery. Oh, God. I think I'd rather just, just plug in this camera and not have to worry about the battery. We'll recharge batteries later. See what I mean about the pink? Yeah, it looks like a, that's probably a female. That's one less worry if that's the case, because I'm worried about two bulls. Two bulls. <laughs> right. yeah. Now, is she making her way to the nipples? Is, She's getting a little closer. Yeah, is somehow nature going to say, OK, this is where you're going to get that I mean, yeah, wonderful Sus colostrum? Susie will probably guide her back. For me, this is going to be a multi-part show, I hope with a good ending, to show you how reproduction in miniature zebus comes together, how the birth process occurs, and how nature and the mother tells the calf how to proceed. It is now completely sunny. The overcast burned off quickly as I predicted. The afterbirth is still hanging there. The umbilical cord is still hanging there. You want to go take that pail and fill it? You were concerned about that. But it was good that you moved the hose away so that the sound of it didn't scare anything. Look how patient Father Rusty is. Watch nature direct the mother and the father how to behave. It's been about two hours since Susie first started to show signs of giving birth. Mini zebu heifer Susie. The father is bull rusty. Also a registered miniature zebu. Boss Indicus humped cattle, but 
tiny for hundreds of years. Baby has a hump. Oh, and the baby has a tiny hump. <laughs> yes. Sure. See that tiny hump behind the ears. Okay, I'm going to go back to the house and make sure the camera in the house is aiming properly. Do you know what, Stan? Maybe you should do that because what I'd like you to do is put in a video, a DVD, and record from the house. Okay. So let's see if technology, video technology, will allow us to capture this whole process. And then we could probably just move out of here and let Susie, the heifer, I think now it's a heifer and I have to start thinking of a name, and Rusty will deal with this process. See, let me show you the cameras we use, X10 cameras. There's one there on the post but it kind of runs into the sun this time of day. So this corner of the cow pen isn't very clear. But the camera behind me, and I'm gonna try to turn this camera around to show it to you, aim the right way. There it is at the corner. I believe without interference from the sun will give us clear shot of what Susie and her calf are doing from the house. Then up here we have yet another camera from a different view. All X10 cameras. See how the front legs look a little bowed out. You know, I, I'm not too concerned about that. I think that's something that will straighten out very soon, but I'm not sure either. So I've never done this before. I've done it with equines, and the legs kind of look spindly when they're born, and not straight. And fortunately for my two equines, they got straight. That noise you just heard was a walkie-talkie, which we use to communicate here on the farm, but other people use to communicate with it too, and it can be a little bit disturbing and have some static. So I'm turning it off now that I have somebody at the house who can make phone calls for me an intercom to the house that's dedicated to communication within Minmore Farms. To be continued in part three. Our cast of characters, Sadie and Eve. Sammy. Demi. Lotus, Rusty, and Susie, www.thesoclose.com.